Hi, I'm Bob Flisser, and Microsoft Office 2010 programs like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint are very well integrated with SharePoint 2010, much more so than in the older versions. In this video, I want to show you what it's like to go and save and open and access files on a SharePoint site. Let's take a look. Right now, I'm in the home page of a SharePoint portal, and I'm going to go over here there's this list that I created earlier called Shared Documents. Now I'm going to click that, and you can see here that there's nothing in there yet. There's a few ways that I could add documents. One way is I could click this Add Document link. And also, you may notice that SharePoint 2010 looks a lot like the desktop applications of Microsoft Office, particularly the ribbon bar. If you look up here on the top, we have some tabs. We have a Library Tools main tab and some sub-tabs. I'm going to click the Documents tab. You can see also here, I can click New Document or Upload Document. I can even create a new folder. In the Library Tools tab, I'm on the Documents sub-tab. I'm going to click Upload Document, and I could upload one document, or I could click here to upload multiple. I'll just do one. I'll click here. And in this dialog box, I could choose where the file is. So I'll click Browse. And you can see I'm pointing somewhere on my D drive. And here's this Word document called Important Stuff. I'm going to double click that. Here it is. Now, if the file already existed, I could choose whether or not to overwrite it. I'll click OK. Now, that's a small file. It uploads quickly. And there it is. Sometimes you might have to refresh the browser if you don't see it immediately. I find that's more common with Microsoft Internet Explorer than Firefox, and I'm using Firefox for this tutorial. What if I want to go and open and edit that Word document? Or maybe I'm somebody else and I want to go and open and edit that document. I'm going to go over here and select it, and I might want to check it out. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, checking it out means that if I have it open, nobody else can open it. So we don't have multiple people hitting on the same document at the same time. I'm going to do that. I'll click Check Out. And you notice there's a little green arrow there, so you know that it's checked out. And I'll click it. It gives me a warning. I'll click OK. And there it is. It's open, and we can see up here in the title bar, it's called Important Stuff, and you can see what kind of important stuff we have here. I'm going to make some edits. I'll just put a line here. We can see that, I'll make that bold, so we can see that that is now an edited document. I'm going to save it, and easiest way, I'll just press Control S to save. And I'll close it. I can either click the little X here, or I can press Control F4 to close it. This is telling me that nobody can see the changes until I check it in. So I'm going to choose yes, that I do want to check it in now that I'm saving it. And I could put some comments if I want. Made minor changes, and I'll click OK. I have Word open, but no document is open. Now let's switch back to SharePoint. In SharePoint, we see it's still checked out. I'll hit the Refresh button, and now it's refreshed. Sometimes you have to do that, so I didn't have to check it in in SharePoint. I just had to refresh the browser. Let's open it up again. This time, I'm going to click it. I won't check it out first. And here, it's asking me, because I'm not checking it out, do I want to open it read-only just to view it, or do I actually want to edit it? So I'm going to open it as read-only. Click OK. And there it is. Here's the change we made. And because it's read-only, we have that warning message. I'll just close the document and go back to SharePoint. Another way of putting a document here is by saving a document from within an Office program. I'm going to go over here to the Library sub-tab. There are a few features here that I want to show you that will help you save documents up on a SharePoint site. One is over here where it says Email a link. I'm going to click that, and that opens up an email message with a link to that particular list. So you, you see the list is called Shared Documents. Here is a link to Shared Documents. Now I could email this to someone, or I can select it, and when I have it selected, I can simply copy it to the clipboard and then paste it in my File Save dialog box. I'm just going to close this email without saving it, because I want to show you another way of doing it. You notice over here there's this link, Open with Explorer, and right now it's grayed out, and that's because I'm using 
Mozilla Firefox. But let's take a look at this SharePoint site in Internet Explorer. In Internet Explorer, that link is available. So when I click that, now I get a Windows Explorer window, sometimes called My Computer, that also is pointing to that particular list on the SharePoint site. And if I click that, you can see here is the URL. And I can simply copy that. I'll press Control C to copy, or if you like, you can right click and choose copy, whichever you prefer. I'm going to go into Microsoft Word. Here in Word, I'm going to create a brand new document. I'll just press Control N. So I want to save this on the SharePoint site. I can press Control S or I could click the little Save button there. Right now this is pointing to my D drive. Okay, I know where my D drive is, but where is the SharePoint site in relation to that? Because I copied the link, the URL, to that SharePoint site, and that's in my clipboard, I could go right up here, click there, and paste. I'll press Control V, and there is the link to that SharePoint site. And I'll just press Enter. And there it is. And we can see there's the share documents list. There's that important stuff document. So here's this new document I just created. That's fine. I'll click Save. So this is now sharing up on that SharePoint site. Let's take a look. I'm going to go back to Firefox. I don't see it immediately, so I'm going to refresh. And in any browser, I can press the F5 key to refresh, or I can click the Refresh button. And you may or may not get a warning. And there it is. There is that new document. OK, great. Let's do this a different way. I'm going to go back to Word open a file that's on my D drive and I'm looking here on my D drive and here is a document called third document So I'm going to open that up and we can see there's some more stuff in here because I already saved files and open files on the SharePoint site Word remembers it so here's what I do I'll go up to the file tab to go into backstage view and I'll go down here into Save and Send. This is new in the Office 2010 programs. And here I'll click Save to SharePoint. And look at this. That SharePoint site is already in there as a recent location, so I don't have to hunt for it. Now, if it weren't there, I could click Browse for a location and then paste the URL as I did before. But I don't need to, so I'm going to leave that there. I'll click Save As. This is the third document. We can see the files are there. Click Save. And now let's go back to SharePoint. I need to refresh. Click the Refresh button. And there is the third document. OK, that's great. But what if I'm using Excel or PowerPoint? All of the Microsoft Office 2010 programs keep track of where they all save and open files. So let's go into Excel. And here's a blank Excel worksheet. Let's put some stuff in here. So here's a simple sheet, and I want to save this to the same SharePoint site. Click the File tab, and in the File tab I'll go to Save and Send. Just like Word, I have the option to Save to SharePoint, and here it keeps track of that same SharePoint site and the same list inside SharePoint. So I'll click Save As, and I'll click the, and I will call this Handy Excel Sheet. Click Save. So let's go back to SharePoint. And again, I'll refresh. I'll just press the F5 key. And there is that handy Excel sheet. OK, that's great. Let me show you one more way that we can put files up here. That is using Windows Explorer, or my computer. Let's go to that window that we already had open. Here's this Windows Explorer window we had open before. I'm going to refresh. So now I can see all the files. So you can see the files that are here in Explorer are the same as the files that we see in SharePoint. So we know it's looking at the same place. I'm going to move this window over here a little bit. And let me go into another window. Here is that class files folder that we were looking at a moment ago. We can see some of the same documents, a few other documents. For example, I have this test file and I have this example file. So I'm going to click that example file. I'll hold down the control key and click that text file. When you hold down the control key, you can select multiple files. And all I have to do is drag this here. So I'm actually uploading a file to SharePoint just by dragging and dropping. 
Also notice that attached to the mouse pointer is a little plus sign, so it's going to copy automatically because I'm copying from one drive to another, so I don't have to do any keyboard shortcut or right mouse click or anything. It uploads. If it doesn't refresh, you just do that manually, and we can see it's there. And again, let's go back to SharePoint, refresh, and now we can see there's that example document and that text file that I put up there. So there are several ways to do it. So it might take a little bit of fiddling around to begin with, not much. And once you do that, all of your Office programs, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Visio, Access, and so on, can all save and open and access files on SharePoint, just as though they were saved on your local hard drive or your local network. I think that's pretty cool.